So thank you everyone for being here. We're excited to have IntelliBoard come in as well with, with Tanya and with Arthur. So we're looking forward to learning a little bit about more about IntelliBoard and uh, hopefully see some things that we can have in applications, but also continuing to be a partner with us as we move along in a variety of different sessions and can bring IntelliBoard forward as a partner uh, and a component that I think other educators in online and in school district uh, management will be very interested in. So. Take it away, Tanya. Thank you, Randy. Hi, everybody. Uh, that's me. It's me. I'm me. And Arthur is our account executive located specifically on the St. Lawrence River. But I uh, did I get that right? Yes. Up there. Um, yep. In, yep, up there. I'm in the US in South Carolina. Thanks for joining. This is one of my favorite topics. So looking forward to sharing it with you. So without further ado, let's dive right in. We're going to talk about storytelling with data, using your evidence and using it wisely. So our agenda today, our agenda is positioning to your audience, right? Identifying the big idea, the ethics of data presentations, displaying data and storytelling in action. And you may end up seeing what that arrow is pointing to at some other point in, the in time, in the very near future. So let's talk about positioning. Positioning is huge, right? So to better understand, your audience, right? The better, if you, if you understand your audience, right? The better your story will be. And we simply do not give enough attention to this very, very simple concept. And we dive into our presentation from our own perspectives instead of focusing on where our audience might actually be. So let's imagine for a second that you're a fourth grade science teacher, right? You just wrapped up an experimental pilot summer learning program on science. And you surveyed the participating kids at the onset and then at the end of the program because you wanted to determine how their attitudes on science may have changed. So you believe the data shows an awesome success story and you wanna continue the program. So you're excited. You fill your presentation with slide after slide of charts and graphs and everyone dies internally and you are arrested for killing your audience. Not a good plan, not a good plan. We seriously need to figure out what our end game is, right? And as the fourth grade science teacher, if you're headed into this presentation thinking you just wanna tell folks about it, then don't even bother, right? It's a waste of your time. It's a waste of their time. That's not what you want, right? If you're involved in communication, it falls into one of two buckets. You're either informing or persuading. And 99% of the time, you're persuading. You need to fully understand what your end game is before you even begin. This controls your message and the data that you're gonna use to add your credibility. So let's talk about who, what, and how, right? Who, what, and how. We need to take five minutes to determine the who, what, and how to build our presentation effectively. Who? So as our fourth grade teacher, right? Are we presenting to the parents of students who participated? The parents of prospective students? other teachers who might be doing a similar program or would like to, or the budget committee who controls the funding for our program. Where, where are we going with this, right? So the parents of students who participated, it was worthwhile. Parents of, parents of successful students, this is the pathway to successful parenting. Right? Like you have to do the science program if you want to be a successful parent. Other teachers, you should do it. The budget committee gives me money, right? Four entirely separate messages, four entirely separate messages. 
right? And in the case of all of the purple, right, we're persuading every time. That's the purpose. It's simply choosing to inform any of these audiences of anything about the program isn't the angle that you should be pursuing because it's not really what you want and it's not effective. So what data will help me make my argument? And how do I best position that data effectively? And this is going into the how and essentially the crux of what it is that we're gonna be talking about today. I love this. I would have written a shorter letter, but I didn't have the time. Blaise Pascal. Conciseness, it's a beautiful thing. It's also significantly harder, right? If you only had three minutes to present, how would you encapsulate what you had to say? And we all know that our attention spans are challenged, right? Now I am fighting for your attention as you get pinged with emails, Skype, Slack, WhatsApp, whatever it is, texts, whatever it is, I'm fighting for your attention. And even now, right, I need to boil down exactly what I want to say for a three minute presentation, right, about what it is that we're doing. So we have to identify what the big idea is. What is the big idea? Nancy Duarte discusses the concept of this big idea in her book, Resonate. The big idea must include three components. It must articulate your unique point of view. That kind of goes back to that panel we saw earlier with the four different audiences. It must convey what's at stake, right? What's at stake differs depending upon the audience. Your big idea must be a complete sentence. So for our fourth grade science teacher, we could suggest that her big idea might be, the pilot summer learning program was successful at improving students' perceptions of science. And because of this success, we recommend continuing to offer it going forward. Please approve our budget for this program. Now, arguably, you could say that this is a run on, but we're going to ignore that part of it, right? I took some English language liberties here, but you get my point. All right, we have to spend some time on this, friends. We have to spend some time on, some time on this, right? With data comes ethical responsibility. I'm here to warn you today about water, right? You need to avoid water because it can be extracted from rocket fuel. It is the main ingredient in pesticides, 100% of violent criminals have consumed water in the hours leading up to their crimes. It's the number one cause of drowning and excess consumption will cause sweating, urination and possibly death. And 100% of people exposed to water will die. You can understand why we are challenged with the ethics of data. So let's look at some of this, right? Mess ex exaggeration and understatement occurs when the facts are not distorted, but the way the information is presented is altered to intentionally or unintentionally exaggerate the facts. And we're gonna talk about ethical trans transgressions and deceptive techniques, right? As exaggeration understatement, we'll talk about truncated access area as quantity and aspect ratio. Same data, different y-axis, right? Obviously, interest rates on the left are out of control. Just, oh my god, they're terrible. We're, we're all headed for a disaster, right? And interest rates on the right, well, you know, they haven't really buried that much, okay? So we just need to be really mindful both about how we present this data and then how we're consuming it this is super important, right? We need to be responsible consumers of this data as well. I know this image is terrible, but I grabbed it. Obviously, it's a screenshot, it's a terrible image, but it really does very accurately present this idea of area as quantity, okay? Because in the United States, clearly 
right? Um, people on welfare is just out of control, right? And you can see that this one point or 108 million is significantly larger than this 101.7 million that is on the right. And plus, I love the source, but you didn't hear me actually say that. Another example is, right, uh, the, this is sort of a, you know, proportion of males and females with public insurance, right? This is also improper area as quantity because it, it's only a 4% difference, but it is significantly larger. And so we presume that it is bigger, either a bigger better or a bigger worse, depending on what we want to drive out of it. This one I love because obviously ice cream causes murder, right? Or murder causes ice cream. I mean, we could go either way on that really. And most of us know correlation and not is not causation and we can't say it enough, right? Uh, ice cream and murders are correlated clearly, but their, their specific relationship is not causal. I liked this one too. Ram 2500 has obviously caused, caused DUIs. So if you buy a Ram 2500, you are clearly going to get a DUI. So I thought that that one was kind of funny as well. This one to me was the most fascinating because I am a person who, when I looked at the pie graphs under question one, question two, question three, they all look the same to me. I didn't perceive any difference among any of them at all. So you could criticize me for being lack of detail oriented. However, I was pretty shocked when I saw the bar charts underneath it because I really had no idea that it wasn't an equal distribution, especially in question two and question three. So it, you know, this is huge from the standpoint of making sure that you're adequately representing your information. So let's play around with data just a hair, right? What are you going to do when you are using data, right? Now you can see here, I can just show you chart after graph, after table, and I can just pile it on and we're gonna have so much fun and then you're all gonna die, right? I can kill you by overloading you with meaningless scattered bits of information. I can also do this. This is a common design choice, right? Here's your graph, your chart rather, here's your chart, and you've got a whole bunch of text on the right. And this is the way a lot of people present data, but it has absolutely zero meaning, right? What, what, what exactly do I want to, you to get from this? Where do I want you to look? This is getting better, right? Because now maybe you can read it, right? So we're, we're, we're improving here still has no meaning until we get here. Now, where do I want you to look, right? I want you to recognize, right, that the amount of activity in the compliance HR protocol and accounting courses is crazy. And we really want to do some appreciative inquiry about what's going on in these courses because it looks fantastic. And how can we replicate that? in these other courses that are not doing so well, right? We want to grab this and, and capitalize on this information, but I am forcing you because I've, I've drawn this red box to look where I want you to look and not just have this tiny little graph, right? The, so let's talk about telling the story with graphs and or tables. So I throw up another table, right? I can see that we've got some stuff going on specifically with a student, Perry Mac, but this is also an overwhelming something to look at. I, where should you look? What should you see? So if I do this, now I've directed your attention to Perry Mac's poor performance, right? In terms of his grades. Now I want you to see the scores, his scores for the courses that we're taking a look at. Oops, I missed one, that's terrible. Now the visits, these are the clicks, the visits inside of the system that Perry's done. And we can begin to compare and contrast the actual activity that Perry has in the course. And then of course the time spent 
that he has inside of these particular in, inside of the system. So now I'm kind of taking you along a path, a, a directed path of what I want you to get from this report, from this table of information. Here's another one I can overwhelm you with, except that now when I'm walking through this data, I'm specifically directing your eyesight to very important pieces of data that I want you to grab, right? In January, February, March, and April, Perry doesn't have that much activity. It's mostly gray. And then you can see his completion information in that final arrow on the right. He ain't doing well, folks, and it's a problem. So let's talk about storytelling in practice. We're going to talk about a day in the life at University College with IntelliBoard. This is Maddie. She is a student services counselor at University College and Maddie receives an automated IntelliBoard course in activity report each week. And Maddie's concerned about the performance of multiple students in some of the courses on her report. And Maddie is particularly interested in Perry Mack's performance. And we already know why, right? It's almost like the end of the story. So Maddie can quickly access Perry's visits, his total time on site, average grades in all courses and time spent if she takes a look at this report. And Maddie can filter for Perry's performance in all of his courses. And then she can also email Perry directly from IntelliBoard. But Maddie notifies University College's instructors about the students she supervises and that she's kind of supporting about all the students at risk. And of course, University College employs dedicated instructors committed to student success. And after hearing from Maddie, they viewed their instructor dashboard. So instructors can view overall learner performance and correlations and learner engagement and event utilization in their courses, making them, of course, better instructors. Using the board, instructors can access the performance metrics of all of their learners and zero in on specific learners and their grades. Notice people how I use that magic red rectangle there. Meanwhile, in another department on campus, we have Dr. Yu, the VP of Instruction at University College. Dr. Yu pulled the Learner Success and Progress Report, filtering for at-risk learner performance as defined by University College, right? So we, University College, they're going with a C minus or lower. That's what they consider to be at risk. So Dr. Yu pulls all of this and she's got all of the information to move forward. Here's our epilogue, friends. All of University College's students perform magnificently and everyone at the college gets a 100% raise. So let's repeat, rewind. Where have we been? Positioning, right? Positioning to your audience. We need to know, right, what you are doing. Take those five minutes and figure out that you're not informing, you are persuading, and what exactly that audience actually cares about. Identify the big idea. We covered ethics of data presentations. I could probably spend hours on just ethics, but you kind of see where I'm driving at, right? Again, we have an ethical responsibility for making sure that we are presenting data correctly. And also as a consumer of data or as consumers of data, we need to be smart about it, right? Be critical about the data that we're viewing so that we are not seeing that data in a way that is inappropriate. We know how to display data and we saw a little bit of storytelling in action. 
So my big idea was the use of storytelling can and should support the data reporting and analytics you can pull from your learning management system to initiate change and or interventions to improve the effectiveness of e-learning from my story. Friends, these are the references. So if anybody wants those, they can contact me and uh, we can put my email in the chat. Very, very happy to share my references for this session. And this is a little bit about me. Now I am about to turn over our platform to Arthur, who is actually going to show you about data from your learning management system. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Tanya. Um, thanks, friends. Thanks, friends. I appreciate it. Everybody have a great day. And thanks so much for joining. Have fun you. with Arthur. <laughs> well, I promise, folks, I will uh, take you on a very brief tour of the system. So I'm going to just share my screen with you right now. And I hope you can all see that. But ultimately, what we have with IntelliBoard is a tool that augments and improves the way you can gather data from your LMS. So the current version of IntelliBoard that I'm going to show you right now would work with uh, Blackboard, Canvas, Brightspace, or Moodle. And uh, I'm going to pop into Moodle here just to show you what it looks like. And then once you're in, uh, you can get more than one view of the information you're looking at. So there's an instructor view, for example, and I go into Moodle, there's a student view. So I'll just pop in here. And if you guys can see the link demo.intelliboard.net, which we'll share with you as well, um, any of you can do what I'm doing right now. This is an open sandbox where if you want to play around, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, and you can get a free trial if you want to. If you want to pop in and use this on your own, of course, please do that. And uh, you know, we'd be more than happy for you to do whatever you want to play around. But right now, I'm inside IntelliBoard for Moodle. This is uh, what an instructor might see, for example. Uh, so as an instructor, I can pop in and I can see a dashboard. So this can be configured with the help of the admins. Uh, I can see what courses I'm involved in. So here I can see a rundown of my accounting class, uh, the overall grades, how many sections are in there. I can individual learner view with the learners button here. So keep in mind, I, I haven't had to step out of Moodle for any of this. It's all inside Moodle for me. Um, but now I can see any individual student and see exactly what's going on. And then I can drill even more deeply if I just click on grades here. And there I am. So this is all driven by the back end, which uh, admins would see. But I just wanted to show you from the outset that you know there's a lot of data inside the system, and certain people only want to see certain kinds of data. So you know if you're going to tell your story, you want to have the data that means something to you. So as an instructor, I can only see the the students and the courses that are part of my universe. Uh, as a student. Uh, you know, there's a learner dashboard, for example, available. I could only see my class marks, my grades, uh, but I'm going to pop over to the analytics side right now. This is the full-blown IntelliBoard suite. Now, of course, anybody can, get, can be given access to this, instructors or admins, um, but this is where all the work is done to, to provide you the data you're looking for. So everything that's in this case inside Moodle can be had uh, by a combination of either what we call monitors, which are these kind of dashboardy type things here, these charts and graphs. So here's one, for example, that shows you when people are logging into your system. And that could be important for you to know. Um, all kinds of different tables can be put onto this home dashboard. Uh, they can be had through here as well. So if you're using Big Blue Button or Totara, there's monitors that actually work uh, by pulling the data from within those. Uh, but by and large, most people are interested in the reports that you can pull from the system. So there's a reports tree here as well. And those reports are broken up between users, courses, or activities. So for example, under users, uh, I can break out and see what's going on for all users or by just by learner role. So there's a learner success and progress table in here. And if you click on that, you open up. Now you can see what's going on. In this case, I can see for everybody, or I can filter this down to specific teachers. Anything that's going on in the universe for students is here. 
Uh, there's a progress indicator, so that shows where the student should be and where the student actually is. You can filter any of this information by opening up these boxes up top here. So let's say, for example, that you really are concerned with at-risk students. So maybe you're saying, in my universe, that's going to be any of these grades here. Well, you could change this list so that you're seeing those learners. Now, what's really cool about that is that not only do you quickly get that data, which might take you a few clicks to do on your own in an, an inside the LMS, or worse yet, maybe that reporting is not natively available. Well, here you can have that information saved as a report, and you can make it so that it automatically notifies people uh, with what we call a send report or a conditional event report. So imagine you're uh, you know, running this Greek mythology class or you're, you're a student with a variety or a teacher with a variety of classes and you want to know who's at risk on a weekly basis. Well, you can have this report pump out to your mailbox every Monday morning at seven in the morning, if you like. So any report that's in the system, and if I broke out the trees over here, you would see there's about 130 reports in here. You can have by just clicking and choosing to export it to Excel if you want, or scheduling it so that it goes to the right people at the right time. So now that can mean people who aren't in the LMS. So the, the, the tool's not restricted. If you have to get this information to stakeholders that don't use Moodle or don't use Canvas or whatever, you can actually, as part of the scheduling feature, choose their email address and get this into their mailbox whenever you like. So keep that in mind. At any time, you can ask these, or you can put information to anybody, like whether they're in the LMS or not. So we've got user reports. We've got course reports. So for example, um, you know, if you're looking at what courses as a, as, a, as an instructor do I need to have graded, or what have what have I fallen behind on grading on? Well, we have a needs grading report that can show you. Here's all the stuff that hasn't been graded yet. And again, I can go and act upon these now, or I can just summarize that report and have it sent to the right stakeholders. Activity reports. So anything that's within the LMS, like for example, if you're a Moodle user, big blue button, uh, we can report on the activity within that particular tool. So anything that, you know, if you need to report just on quiz uptake or forum uptake or people using the forums, uh, that's all doable just by building or working your way through the tree of reports here. You can have if then notifications. So if a certain uh, condition is met, I want something to get or somebody to get a report. So I can create what we call a conditional event for that. So if I want to, I can say, okay, I want to make it so that anytime an instructor has spent less than a certain amount of time or a student's grade has fallen below a certain level, or a student hasn't been active in the system for a certain amount of time. For example, in Ontario, uh, we have uh, clients tell us, hey, five days, I need to know that right away when a student hasn't been in the system for five days. Well, you can create what we call a send report that automatically will generate a report and send it out to the right stakeholders for any students that have been inactive for a certain amount of time choose emails of who it should go to, choose which teachers you should go to. And from there, you can choose cohorts if there are any, and on and on. So you can build a report like that and it will go out as an Excel spreadsheet or a PDF or whatever you like. Now, on top of that, we give you a couple build functions depending on the LMS you're using. So uh, if you're using uh, Moodle, we have built into the system right now the ability to build with a drag and drop feature. So you don't even have to be a programmer. If there's a report that you would like that you don't see in there. Now, remember, in this report tree, there's about 130 reports in there. But if there was something that you didn't see in there, uh, you could build your own report just by choosing fields from over here, choosing the chart method that you want to display with. So any report can be built that you can imagine. Or if you're a programmer and you've got some SQL or SQL knowledge, uh, we have a build with SQL feature as well. On top of that, we have a permit tool so you can choose who gets to see what information and uh, how they will use it. Uh, so again, 
permissions are an important thing. You want to make sure certain people only see the information in their universe. We have the permit tool to help you with that. So at the end of the day, that's what our tool does for you when it comes to telling that story with data. We take it, all the information that you've got, and we try to make it easy for you to access, try to make it so that you can uh, pull whatever information you want, either in a chart and graph form like this, or if you want to see it in terms of reports, whatever you like, and then it can be automated for you, it can be exported, you can do whatever you like with it. So I'll just pop back out of here for a second because I can't see if there's any chat or anything else. And I'll just ask, are there any questions about what I've just shown you? Because it's kind of quick and I know people have other presentations to go to and the like, but does anybody have a question they have uh, based on anything I've shown so far or anything you'd like to see? A quiet bunch. Well then, what I'll do is just to show you one last thing in terms of how you can see it for yourself. Um, if I go back to here, I would just encourage you, if you want to try it out for yourself, uh, we have at app.intelliboard.net a sign-up page. Uh, you are able to get 30 days free access to the tool if you would like it. Uh, you have about 10 or 15 minutes of work to do. That's it if you want to have your LMS connected. Uh, and then you can start seeing everything I just showed you a moment ago. So I'd encourage you, if you want to do a free trial, please log into app.intelliboard.net. Go ahead and sign up and you'll be connected and uh, we'll go from there and see what you think about it. Uh, and of course as well, if you want to play in a sandbox, please demo.intelliboard.net gets you to our live sandbox. Now I should stress, it's uh, not real data and there's not a ton of it in there. There's nothing like seeing your own information. So I'd say over and over again, please do this if you can, just go ahead and connect your own data and you'll see your live information in there. Uh, but failing that, uh, please go to our sandbox. And if you're a Canvas site, like I know a lot of you are, uh, you can click on Canvas, you can watch a quick video of how it works, and then you can just sign in and boom, all of a sudden you're inside our system for Canvas and that's it. So I'll just stop the share here. And again, I'll leave it to any questions at all that you might have. I see something in the chat window there. Th yeah, absolutely, Brad, please feel free to drop in there. And what I'll do at the same time is, um, I will put that link in the toolbar right now for you in the chat window. So if you're interested in seeing that, please log on, have at it. Contact information is all over the place. My profile is on the uh, Can -E Learn site as well. Uh, are there any other questions though? Because I don't want to belabor the point. We've showed you the tool and uh, Tanya told you a good story. So. I'm hoping that if there's an opportunity to show you in more detail, you let us do that for you. But if not, I'd be happy to give you the rest of your time back. So last call for any questions at all before we call it a day. Well, Arthur, just a quick question. Um, you mentioned that to hook it up to Moodle, we'd have to connect with our administrator and everything for that. So if I, I have a Moodle course, if I wanted this connected to that, my administration would have to approve and set that up for me? Yeah, there's going to be, when you fill out that form, and like I said, it takes about 10 minutes, and I'm not the brightest guy in the world, but I, I can do it. Um, you know, there'll be at some point you have to connect to the LMS, right? So there's, you know, a connection that has to take place. But even with, you know, universities running thousands of courses, that whole thing takes about 10 minutes. So you'll just have to get to the point where you have to tell it your, your Moodle details. Are you self-hosted, Bryce, or do you guys uh, I'm use with uh, I'm with the school district in Kamloops Elementary. Okay, all right. So you, you, you host your own stuff, right? On Moodle, yes. Yeah, okay, good. So in some cases, we have people that are using a, uh, a hosting service and they go in and do the connection. But in your case, yeah, you could hook in just one course or one sandbox, or you could put it to production, whatever you had. Um, and you, you know, fully, you know, I guess the other thing I should point out, we don't copy or store any data too, so that when you are connected there, 
um, you know, we, we are only peering in at your data through a window. We're not actually collecting anything and we're not storing anything else. In fact, we have testimony from Moodle HQ uh, that speaks to that and how we're a, an improved integration partner. And, and that's partly why we don't store anything. So yeah, all I'd say Bryce, is just go ahead, click a few things. And uh, I mean, I've been on demos with people where they were able to get into it in, you know, five minutes. So have at it. I, I encourage you to just play around. How many, how many people do you think you, like, is it just one course or is it multiple courses? Um, I would use it for, for four courses for myself, but our school has, has many, right? Okay. So, yeah. Well, if you're looking but yeah, I'll play around with it for sure. I was just yeah. curious how much administration and everything. So not much. And yeah. You know, we've got people on standby to help with that too. Um, I, I would say just as a proof of concept, hook it up to the to the courses you're talking about, but we'd be happy to do it writ large as well. And uh, yeah, a month should be plenty of time to see if it's gonna do anything for you. Awesome, thanks very much for the presentation. My pleasure, much appreciated. Well, Randy, I, I guess that's wrap up time if you're still here. Yep. That's great, there thank you very much. Appreciate that. My pleasure. And uh, thanks, Bryce. So you, like, if you, I'm going to say thank you very much. I appreciate your contributions of being here. Look forward to further discussion and dialogue with you as well. So I'm going to just close the recording at this point. Thanks very much, everybody. Take care.